In this video, we're going to be talking about my 1972 Kawasaki S2354. I'll show you how I made the engine and then we're going to take it for a ride. This is one of three S2354s I've made and the only one with a drum brake. The original bike has a three cylinder 250cc engine, but by adding one extra cylinder brings it up to 333 and with, it, with slightly oversized pistons just under 350cc. So one engine I cut between the right hand cylinder and the second engine I cut between the middle cylinder. Then I joined the two outside bits together to make it into a four. The cylinder heads and barrels on the S1 engine are separate, so you've got one barrel and head per cylinder. This means by adding two middle cylinders, you can make a four. This is the 333cc version. With a minor bit of machining to the crankcase mouths, you can fit the KH400 barrels. That would make a 533cc version. And here's a set of crankcases that I've made from two triple crankcases welded together. You can just see the join if you look closely. The Kawasaki triple crankshaft is a pressed up roller bearing design, which makes it easy to strip down and reconfigure into a four cylinder and change the phases to 90 degrees. Here's a couple of S2350 cranks I made. With the crankshaft made, it's an easy job to assemble the engine because the rest is basically a stock build. So you drop the crank into your modified crankcases, reassemble the gearbox and bolt it all up. And here's a completed bottom end ready to put the barrels on and the pistons and the cylinder heads. And here is the finished engine looking from the front and the back and I think it looks just perfect and fits perfectly back into the S1 frame. I've had a quick rummage in the shed and I found enough parts to make a complete 354 cylinder engine so I'm going to make one and video the whole process for a future series of videos. And here's the finished S2 with its four cylinder engine, stainless steel exhaust system and drum brakes. The extra width of the engine blends in nicely in the chassis and doesn't look out of place. The kickstart lever and brake pedal are slightly modified originals. I made the four expansion chambers from 304 stainless steel, 1.2mm thick, first cutting out sections with my tin snips and then rolling them around a piece of bar by hand and finally welding them together into cones. The last thing to do is to weld all the cones together and then add the baffle tubes. I made the expansion chamber slightly smaller than the optimum size. This is so I can fit them neatly on the bike, but the power is still there. The ignition system on the S2350 is points, and I've got four sets of points behind the left-hand cover. Let's take the cover off and have a look. And here they are, four sets of KH250 points. While the cover's off, I just used some ZX1 Extra Lube to lubricate the felt pad and the pivots. I retain the original gear lever, just reshape it slightly, but the gears are reversed, so it's now one up, four down, which is like the racers use. The engine's barely wider than the tank, which is nice, and here's the handlebar area, which is all standard S2, with the standard switch gear and clutch lever, standard clocks, and the standard throttle and brake. The choke for the four carburetors is built into the throttle, when I bought the donor bike from DK Motorcycles, I was well pleased. It had its original key in unmarked condition. The front drum brake is a twin leading shoe and works amazingly well for its size. The main thing to do with these drum brakes is to set them up properly and then machine the shoes on the lathe so they fit the drum exact. Then they work really well. Under the seat, I fitted a twin USB charging port 
so that I can charge my mobile phone and my GoPro camera when I'm out on the road. And it also tells the voltage, which is a useful thing. And in the toolkit, I've got my Swiss Army knife, because I wouldn't go anywhere without it. I retained the original two-stroke oil pump system with a tank on the side that holds about a litre and a half of oil. And then there's a pump inside this cover. Let's have a quick look. I fitted an oil pump from a H2C. These have four outlets, so I can put one pipe to each cylinder. But the problem is it pumps too much oil, but that's easily rectified because you can take all the pumps apart and change the bits around. Some of them got fast scrolls, some of them have got slow scrolls. There's different diameters. So you just mix and match to reduce the oil flow. And then with fully synthetic, you can make it run perfect with no smoke. This is a small plunger. And this is a bigger plunger, so it won't fit in. There's not much difference, but it makes a big difference on the amount of oil at a pump per stroke. This is the triple pump with the three outlets. And then the four outlet pump has two extra lugs there, which you'll see on the bike. The last feature of the oil pump is it's connected to the throttle. So as you open the bike up, it injects more oil. With the cover back on, let's go for a ride so you can hear the engine. Hello? No, yeah, I'm just going out on one of my two strokes. No, it doesn't smoke that bad. It's almost electric. It's got battery on it. Oh, okay. All right, then. Bye, Greta. Bye, bye. I noticed that all the birds have flown away. There must be a reason. And Tracy rescued this little hedgehog yesterday. It's only 200 grams, and that's safely in the house. So it's time to start the bike.
Well, I just got back from my ride and the 354 went amazing. It is so buzzy through the gears and I just love riding it. It's so light and flickable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe. Oh yeah, don't forget, I'm gonna convert these two engines into an S2 354 cylinder engine and record the whole process, maybe over a series of three or four videos in the near future. So make sure you subscribe, otherwise you might miss out.